world, this is the Gadget Flow Podcast, the show about everything related to products, entrepreneurship, marketing, and crowdfunding. This week, I got to chat with Benjamin Ertl, and Benjamin works at a company called Retailbound. And basically, what they do is they help startups and brands have killer crowdfunding campaigns and succeed in the crazy world of retail. So we had a great conversation full of valuable insight, and I think you're going to get a ton out of it. So without further ado, here's my interview with Benjamin Ertl. Okay, I am here with Benjamin Ertl. Benjamin, how are you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic. How about yourself? Doing good. Doing good. We're super, super excited to have you on the Gadget Flow podcast. Uh, you've done a lot of awesome work throughout the past couple of years. And so for p- people who don't know who you are or uh, what it is you do, can you just give a snapshot into who you are? Sure. Um, well, I guess I'm I'm a pretty normal guy, but no, we uh, we we work with a lot of up and coming consumer product brands, um, plenty from the crowdfunding space, but mid sized larger manufacturers as well. Um, we're not a we're not a sales agency. We're not a distributor. Instead, we categorize ourselves as a, a full service retail management firm. All of our guys and gals here at Retail Bound are former large chain retail buyers, as well as having experience selling to both retailers and B2B channels. Um, really, really, what I do and, and what I'm all about is I look for unique products that are marketable. They're not based on price. And we help them to accelerate getting retail ready, whether it be online retail or offline retail. And then once ready, uh, I guess in a nutshell, we become their turnkey sort of outsourced retail team, uh, not only for you know the sales and the, and the strategy, um, but most importantly, driving the brand, driving end consumer sales, and focus on that, that long-term growth that's so elusive for so many startups. Yeah, definitely, man. So what you you say you your job is finding finding those brands. Can I ask where like how do you how do you search and find good brands and products? Yeah, so part of it is objective and part of it is subjective, I suppose. You know, objective being okay, you know, how much money have they raised, you know, what kind of people are on the team you know, is this likely to be a product that will go through with manufacturing and get to the point where retail is more of a priority? Um, but besides those sort of, you know, the, the number based decisions, a lot of times, you know, I'll spend, you know, uh, plenty of uh, time at trade shows like CES or the House First Show. And a lot of it just comes down to what retailers and consumers are looking at at the time. Um, you know, we've worked with everything from uh, AI robotics to posture wearables and you know wall decor and, and part of it is really just having having that eye for what's marketable what's new um you know and, and part of that is is being in the shoes of a consumer as we all are and then part of that of course is being in the in the shoes of what buyers are thinking as well yeah definitely so when i think of retail i think of you know big box stores like a Target brand or uh, Walmart or things like that. But I think that that might be a little bit of a misconception. Am I right? Yep. So um, yeah. And then that, and that's, I hear that all the time. Uh, retail bound because of our name. You know, oftentimes people say, oh, you know, Walmart, Best Buy, Staples, you know, all, all these kind of uh, big box stores, you know, the, the 500, 3000 stores. But, you know, this day and age, uh, it doesn't really matter where you're doing business per se, you know, what really matters is the end consumer sales. And because we're working with a lot of Indiegogo, Kickstarter funded projects, you know, a lot of the times start in the first six to eight to maybe even 12 months with, you know, e-tailers that might be, you know, brookstone.com, bestbuy.com, you know, sharp image catalogs, a couple select distributors. And really it's for a lot of these young brands, it's a matter of establishing a sales history, establishing a, a reputation in retail, before the risk gets low enough to approach some of these larger opportunities where they're they're putting you in a thousand, twelve thousand stores. Um, so retail, you know, this day and age, it's really more of an omni-channel approach. And you know, big brands are finding that out more and more, and, and younger brands are are finding out that um, that there's a sort of slow burn approach to, I guess, true scalability. Yeah, no, I I appreciate that distinction a lot. I think that's helpful. So, why don't you 
just get start from the beginning about your history with Retail Bound. Like, how did you get started, and how do you, what is what is your story like regarding the company? Sure. Um, so my personal story, I I was studying abroad in Germany my junior year of college. Um, I was an econ German major, and so you know, really, it was just getting some experience on the resume, you know, just like most, uh, m- most college students. So, you know, I saw retail bound and I saw the opportunity with crowdfunding, with increased VC interest, with, uh, you know, improvements to manufacturing. The fact that there, there's so many products coming out and it's not slowing down anytime soon. Um, and I saw the gap that retail bound filled. And so I interned my, my junior year of college and I, you know, I guess one thing, well, one, one thing led to another and, yeah, I did my job well, and after college, became you know full time hire, and and uh, and here we are. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So you said that you kind of innovated the crowdfunding, or you, maybe you didn't say that, but I'm gathering that you kind of innovated the crowdfunding side of what you guys do. Am I right? A little bit, at least you're part of that. That yeah, yeah I mean, I don't want to you know I don't want to take too much credit. By no means am I a Steve Jobs of crowdfunding. <laughs> um, Sure but, thing, uh, but. but no, you know, I, I think there's there's a lot of options for crowdfunded brands and young young consumer brands to you know sell more products to the masses. Um, you know, and certainly not all of them are for you know mass market. But where where retail bond comes into play is you know, usually brands they think of hiring you know commission only sales reps to open the door at retailers and distributors or relying on a distributor themselves. You know, for the sales efforts, fulfillment efforts, uh, and those are useful options and they're they're definitely the most affordable uh, i mean you know who, who wouldn't want somebody based on performance to get them into retail but because that's such a commodity these days you know anybody of course being a little facetious but any, anybody can hire a sales rep you know with enough effort anybody can get in touch with a buyer or a distributor what it really comes down to after you know several months of effort getting into retail is you know how can you how can you differentiate the brand how can you drive end consumer sales because that's what retail uh, retail buyers really care about the most. They, they, they care about, you know, how are you going to make me money and are you going to be a hassle to deal with? And that, and that's really where retail bound comes into play the most, you know, it's getting into retail for our startups. And, and I, I don't want to sound like I'm being um, uh, maybe egotistic, but it's not that difficult to, to have our team get our clients into retail. The, the, the hard work that follows is, like I said before, you know, all, all about that kind of back end activity. Yeah, definitely. So in it, like, let's take crowdfunding, for example, like maybe some, some crowdfunding projects you guys have worked on in the past, like what are maybe one or two that really stick out to you as kind of, um, you know, milestones and things that you look back on really fondly that kind of were, were a turning page for you guys in the crowdfunding space? Yeah, so the, the the two examples that I always think of, just because you know they're sort of they they've gone through you know two or three years of our of our program of our service, and so they're the most the most kind of mature examples. But um, the first one would just be Upright Technologies. You know, they were the the first posture wearable on the market. Uh, they had a lot of challenges to educate not only consumers but the retail buyers themselves. Um, you know, we started with them in, I believe it was early 2015, you know, just prior to CES, uh, they were still in the pre-order phase. So, you know, extremely early stage, um, after a little over a year and they were doing about $750,000 in retail revenue. Um, you know, and that doesn't just include, I guess, retail as well. You know, they, they were also selling B2B. Um, so because they were posture wearable, um, you know, they, Yes, selling to consumers, but also to businesses who were, for example, you know, creating a, a employee wellness program. Um, right. You know, now they're they're selling an Apple, and they've created more products. Um, but their team was really relying on us to execute any and all retail activities while they focus on the product. Um, I guess a real, you know, another quick example would be Cujo. Uh, C U J O, uh, and they were the more or less the first router IoT security uh, device on the market. And I guess long story short, you know, similar type of scenario where they they hired us just before CES, just before you know retail became a, a hot topic at the company, and um, you know, we we took them from 13 employees to 130 employees in about 
two years. Um, you know, that same kind of pre-order phase to about five and a half million. And they were, and they are selling in most major retailers. Um, in QVC, for example, they they sold through more units per minute than Amazon's uh, Alexa, which is definitely crazy. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, and then, uh, yeah, and then, and then today they're licensing their their IP to telecoms like Comcast, uh, which for them and, and for many startups and, and hardware you know, hardware products. The, the long-term revenue outlook isn't just about, you know, uh, selling the physical product and then, okay, there we go. Okay, what's our next product? Um, it's very prudent to have, you know, potential subscription models or potential, um, you know, end game where, hey, you know, a company is buying out our, our designs or, you know, something, you know, buying us out as a company. Um, you know, sometimes those long-term horizons have to be, you know, considered as well. Yeah, definitely, man. So I'm kind of... When we're doing the when uh, for this podcast, I think I I always think I go back to like the creators who are listening and maybe thinking about starting a campaign themselves or launching a product or something. So I just wanted to ask, like, what are some mistakes that you've seen creators make in the past, or what are some maybe pitfalls that you could um, maybe warn people against for, for when they're launching their next campaign or something that they should be aware of or cautious of? Yeah, I think any creator who's developing a campaign, you know, they just have to keep in mind that, um, you know, in terms of going to retail, you know, is that going to be your end game? You know, do you really know what the, the whole process is going to look like from idea to, you know, the end consumer? And I, and I think in a lot of cases, we hear from startups who have, you know, uh, had a successful crowdfunding campaign. Okay, one year later, they've done some sales at Amazon. And now it's time to look at retail. And we say, or, or we find out that, you know, well, you know, your margins just aren't, aren't good enough, you know, despite some successful sales, or, you know, it's, it's just not appropriate for, you know, these types of retailers based on the time of year. And so there's a lot of bottlenecks that can happen if you're not at least taking some, some key, uh, preparation activities, you know, out of the picture and, and putting those in your back pocket for later. Um, so I guess, uh, I guess in short, you know, just having, having the ability to <laughs> almost see what's going to happen before it comes. But, but, but part of that is, is, you know, getting the expertise, you're asking around um, and, and making sure that you don't sort of put all your eggs in, in a basket only to realize later on that you have to go back and fix things. Sure. Definitely. Do you have any, like, are there any like good resources for like learning about things like that? Like, are there any good books or websites or blogs or anything that you could point out that maybe people could like that refer to like, here's a good guide on how to do this or, or anything like that? Yeah. So, I mean, I write quite a few articles on LinkedIn myself, um, but besides just me, um, you know, there's, there's the Bolt blogs. There's a bunch of accelerators and incubators out there that, you know, publish blogs. Nice. Um, you know, there's other, there's other podcasts and other content. I think more importantly than just, you know, the, the resource, like, you know, it's, it's xyz.com or, you know, so-and-so's blog. I think what's most important because everybody has such a specific strategy, product, target audience, price range, you know, margins, the best thing that a company can do is real or founder is realize what questions they have to ask, you know, what questions do they have to, you know, either, you know, Google at the very least or, or, you know, find, find an expert and ask them, um, you know, sometimes people say, oh, you know, how do I get into retail? And it's like, well, you know, that's not really the right question. The question is, you know, how do you uh, position your product so that retailers will be enthusiastic and they'll say, oh yeah, you know, that, that makes a lot mm. of sense. We need that. I can see that being successful in our stores and you know so it's really how do you um how do you ask the right questions i guess to get down the path that you want yeah i think that that kind of goes for almost anything in business and probably even largely life <laughs> just how to, you know right. stepping outside of a situation and being able to identify the right question to ask maybe not the most immediate uh, question or the most shiny object question, but like the right question. That's actually like a, a super, a superhero skill, I think in business <laughs> a little bit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of times people say, especially for retail, um, like, like you don't know what you don't know. Uh, and that's, it sounds like such a, a melancholy, like, well, you know, how can I succeed if I don't know what I don't know? Um, 
and and I like to say like it's always best to find someone who can do in one hour that it would take you or your team ten hours to do. Um, and I know you know it's you know, like okay, well, easier said than done, and that's true. Um, but you know, having that that kind of thought process and mindset, uh, you know, helps startups to avoid a lot of pitfalls. Yeah. Definitely, man. So, uh, say so I'm I'm a person who's launching a campaign or a product. How can uh, Retail Bound help me? Uh, like, what what exactly does that process look like if I wanted to work with you guys? Sure. So, for early stage startups, you know, people who are just considering getting into retail, um, because we've been large chain retail buyers, you know, we we know exactly what buyers are looking for and what they're what kind of questions they're going to ask. And so a lot of times just having an hour here, hour there with one of our consultants, you know, goes a long way in uh, demystifying, you know, the path towards retail. Um, you know, it might seem like retail is such a far away thing, um, but gaining some some exposure to it and some planning, you know, even if it's six months ahead of time can be hugely advantageous. Um, but once companies start to get a little bit closer to actually launching in retail. I mean, we, we have several different services. Uh, one of the services, for example, is called this retail prep package, where essentially a startup will spend just two months to get 100% retail ready. Um, and you know they can focus on manufacturing and finding investors. Uh, we're, we're the ones doing the work, and it really only requires two hours a week of their input. Um, but besides the, besides the strategy and the consulting, which is, of course, important, um, you know, as far as working with retail bound, uh, this this main service, this main model that we've been using for so many Indiegogo Kickstarters uh, is called managed retail marketing. And um, like I said before, it essentially allows us to be their retail execution partner. You know, sales, retail, channel marketing, and channel management. You know, usually the first 30, 45 days are spent getting retail ready. If we haven't done that already. Um, you know, generally speaking, the first one to three months is setting up, you know, buyer appointments and meetings with, you know, typically low hanging fruit to establish that, that sales history like we talked about before. Uh, and I would say on average, most of our startups start to see purchase orders uh, in about three to five months, uh, which is pretty good. Yeah. Dude, that's awesome. Cool. Oh, okay. So where can people connect with you and what you're doing online? Yeah, so the most active place would be uh, LinkedIn. You know, I'm I'm, I'm always writing, I'm you know, always connecting with people, and kind of contributing where I can. Uh, I mean, if you just search Benjamin Ertle, you know, retail bound, you'll you'll find me pretty quickly. Um, you know, otherwise, I've done some content here and there. Um, you know, actually, there's there's a a website. It's called retailboundteam.com, and people can. Set up an appointment with me there as well. Uh, it's on my LinkedIn profile page. So again, not too hard to find. Um, and we are actually giving a, a free book away that our founder, uh, Johan, uh, Johan Jacob, wrote a while back on getting retail ready. Um, you know, free paperback book for people who schedule a call with me and you know just kind of want to bounce some ideas off. Dude, that's awesome. I think everyone out there should, should try doing that because you guys – you know what you're doing big time. <laughs> so Benjamin, man, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for being on the show this week. I, like I said, you guys are total experts at what you do. And so I'm excited for our audience to check out what you guys are up to and, uh, and to take in everything you had to say in this show. So thank you so much for your time, man. Yeah, it's my pleasure. All right. Have a good one. That was my interview with Benjamin Ertle. Please make sure to go check out retailboundteam.com to set up a call with him and get a free book in the process. You can find links to all of his stuff in the show notes of today's episode. This podcast is made by Gadgetflow, and we are proud to be the number one platform to find new and awesome gadgets. So please make sure to check out the website for all the new products we're curating every single day. We'll be back next week with another new episode. So in the meantime, please go rate and review our show on iTunes. Thank you so much for listening to the Gadget Flow Podcast.